Vasudevaya Janmad Yasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Charates Bhavigaswarat Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaya Muyan Surayaha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Maya Yatra Tri Sargo Mesha Damna Swina Sadani Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality. I offer my respectful base is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitrovo Tra Paramo nirmatsinam satam Vedyam vastavam atra vastu Shivadam taba trayon mulanam Shivadam taba trayon mulanam mahamuni krite Kimba parer ishwara Sadyohride avurudite tra Krite bihi sisu sabistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in, its, uh, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataro galitam falam Sukumokadam rita dravya samyutam Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam Mohur ahoraska bhuvi bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Shri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hirdiyantak Stohiya Badrani Vidunoti Srihitsatam 
to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear about him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it self-righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In this way, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tadarajas Tamo Nasta Presu Badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke, Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas Tamo Bhavo. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat Bhakti Yogataha Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangasya Jayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure devotion, good, pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chasya karmani jista evat manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection Enables and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 28. Sutta Uvacha. Evam chintayat yat evam chintayato jishno Krishna pada saro ruham Krishna pada saro ruham Sohar dena tiga dena Sohar dena tiga dena Santasid vimalamati Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Sutta Goswami said, Thus, being deeply absorbed in thinking of the instructions of the Lord, which were imparted in the great intimacy of friendship, and in thinking of his lotus feet, Arjuna's mind became pacified and free from all material contamination. Prayer by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Since the Lord is absolute, deep meditation upon him is as good as yogic trance. The Lord is non-different from his name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, and specific actions. Arjuna began to think of the Lord's instructions to him on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Only those instructions began to eliminate the tinges of material contamination in the mind of Arjuna. The Lord is like the sun. The sun's appearance means immediate dissipation of darkness or ignorance. And the Lord's appearance within the mind of the devotee can at once drive away the miserable material effects. Lord Chaitanya has therefore recommended constant chanting 
of the name of the Lord for protection from all contamination of the material world. The feeling of separation from the Lord is undoubtedly painful to the devotees, but because it is in connection with the Lord, it has specific transcendental effect, which pacifies the heart. Feelings of separation are also sources of transcendental bliss, and they are never comparable to contaminated material feelings of separation. Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> so, uh, yes, the, this first point is very, very important. It says, since the Lord is absolute, deep meditation upon him is as good as yogic trance. So in the second chapter, Bhagavad Gita is a very interesting and important verse, which says, Anybody who, th the, basically it says, anyone who thinks that the uh, results obtained by Sankhya Yoga or any other yoga is different than results obtained by Bhakti Yoga is mistaken. So, um, in other words, it's basically it's what is being said here also. It says, since the Lord is absolute deep meditation upon him, is as good as yogic trance. What's yogic trance? It's samadhi, where the mind is completely fixed on uh, the relationship with the super soul. So, deep meditation upon Krishna is as good as yogic trance. The Lord is non different from his name, form, quality, pastimes, entourage, and specific actions. So, the devotee can meditate uh, just like Arjuna is meditating on the instructions that he received from Krishna. That's the same as meditating directly on Krishna. Thus being deeply absorbed in thinking of the instructions of the Lord which were imparted in the great intimacy of friendship and in thinking of his lotus feet, Arjuna's mind became pacified and free from all material contamination. So this concept that uh, people engaged in, in like Patanjali Yoga uh, or people engaged in deep meditation that is uh, more important than going on Sankirtan and chanting Hare Krishna or preaching about the Lord or teaching Bhagavad Gita, that's not true. Uh, that's a false uh, statement and this is something that devotees have to be convinced of uh, sometimes devotees uh, when newer people come to Krishna consciousness to show that they are some kind of yogi they will sit in the temple in front of the deities close their eyes sit in a lotus position and, and pretend to meditate without knowing that the real object of meditation is Krishna, Radha and Krishna. That looking at Radha and Krishna is, is actually the goal of meditation, or meditating on Radha and Krishna is actually the goal of meditation. So these are some of the things that we encounter. So if you tell someone who comes to the temple and sits down in the lotus position with their uh, hands like this on their knees and they're right in front of the deities but their eyes are closed and they're meditating as if they are, by the way uh, real yogis never close their eyes and never keep them open they're half closed or half open uh, if you close your eyes what will happen, you'll eventually go to sleep so yogis don't close their eyes but they don't keep them completely open either so, uh, 
unless people understand how to please Krishna, whatever they do will not be complete. And uh, because of that, they have a good chance of falling down. So Arjuna is meditating uh, or thinking about the instructions that he received from Krishna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. And it says that these were imparted in great intimacy of friendship. So this is a, a, a very important point. When we are trying to teach someone something, it should be done with this air of intimacy and, and sincere friendship. So Prabhupada had said uh, in his letters to devotees that one should not be harsh in their dealings with devotees. One should be friendly and try and convince them with kind words and, and friendly attitude. That's what Arjuna, that's what Krishna did to Arjuna. Uh, of course, he started out in an indirect way telling Arjuna that he was a fool because he was lamenting for something that's not worthy of lamenting. But that's what a guru does. Uh, Prabhupada often said to his disciples that my, my first duty is to point out imperfections or point out uh, inappropriate things that the devotees are doing. Because unless you can correct a person's behavior, you're not actually a guru, or you're not actually a, a real teacher. You can't just sit there and, and tolerate a person committing offenses or making mistakes and not try and help them uh, correct those mistakes. So this is the problem. If you do try and correct the mistakes of someone, oftentimes they get angry and they don't want to accept such instructions. So therefore, this friendly attitude, this kindness, this patience, this uh, uh, determination with intimacy to help someone is extremely important because uh, we all have uh, the desire not to be surrendered to Krishna and not to uh, be, let's say, uh, willing to listen and take good advice. So this is also explained where it says in the uh, 16th chapter, Asatyam apratistam te jagat ahur anishwaram aparas para sambutam kim anyat kama hai to come. They say, that it means the asuras, that the world is unreal, with no foundation, no God in control. They say it's produced a sex desire and has no cause other than lust. So this is the state of being of most living entities. Not all, but most. So Prabhupada explains, the demoniac, the demonic conclude that the world is phantasmagoria. In other words, it's something that is uh, illusory and uh, something that has some great, it's like a great show, but uh, it's actually not real. So there's no cause and effect, no controller, no purpose. Everything is unreal. They say that this cosmic manifestation arises due to chance, material action, and reactions. They do not think that the world was created by God for a certain purpose. So these are all conclusions that people are living with. And, and they also, their prayer, and it's very ironic, sometimes they say, my only prayer is, I pray, and they don't say who they pray to, that there's nothing after death. That means they're not going to be held responsible. So therefore, they're free to act in this whimsical, demonic way without any fear of a, a judgment. This, of course, is all false. has no factual basis to it. They have their own theory that the world has come about in its own way, and that there is no reason to believe that there is a God behind it. For them, 
There is no difference between spirit and matter, and they do not accept the supreme spirit. In other words, for them, everything is matter. Everything is matter only, and the whole cosmos is supposed to be a mass of ignorance. According to them, everything is void, and whatever manifestation exists is due to our ignorance in perception. They take it for granted that all manifestation of diversity is a display of ignorance. Just as a dream, we may create so many things which actually have no existence. So this is what you're faced with. This is the type of people that we're meeting. This is the type of junk education they're, that they're getting, and they become convinced of these principles. So to bring them to Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said, uh, one has to expend a hundred gallons of blood. Well, even if you drop a few drops of blood, it's dis distressful. But <laughs> imagine a hundred gallons of blood. So that's how hard it is to, to help someone become a devotee. But therefore, it's necessary that it be done, as Prabhupada uses this wonderful phrase, uh, that Krishna imparted the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna in great intimacy of friendship. Very important point. Uh, this is not only a, a, a preaching strategy, but it's actually uh, the nature of the devotee to have this feeling uh, uh, out of compassion for fallen souls and their terrible, dire condition. Uh, just like there's a true story of a person who was a thief in India and in Mumbai, and he was in jail. And in jail, he got a Back to Godhead magazine. And while he was reading Back to Godhead magazine, he saw a picture of Prabhupada. And he saw that Prabhupada had an expensive watch on his wrist. So he became, uh, let's say, determined to meet Prabhupada so he could steal that watch. This is a true story. And eventually he did get out of jail and he went to Juhu Beach Temple. He was still somewhat in construction, but Prabhupada's room was sort of ready and, and Prabhupada was there and he asked to see Prabhupada. And somehow or other, the devotees let him in. And he was sitting across uh, from Prabhupada's desk. And it's one of his low desks, and Prabhupada was sitting low also. And he, w he was sitting in front of him, looking at him. And Prabhupada had the watch on that he saw in the magazine. So this was his chance. But the way Prabhupada spoke to him, with a sense of this, same kind of sense of, in, uh, let's say, of intimacy, of friendship, Prabhupada was kind. And this guy was a thief, but, you know, he was like uh, touched by Prabhupada's attitude to meet him so he could sit intimately in front of him. And they were talking nicely. And Prabhupada said, so what, what is your purpose? And he admitted why he came. He told him that he was, he's a thief, he was in jail. He read the, the uh, Back to Godhead magazine and saw that Prabhupada had an expensive watch on, uh, on his wrist. And he said, I came here to steal your watch. And Prabhupada took his watch off and handed it to him. <laughs> and he was shocked. He was shocked, and, and he, he didn't accept it. And from that point on, he tried to become a devotee. And eventually, he did become a devotee, and he's still there in, in Mumbai, serving in the Juhu Temple. It's an amazing story, a true story. So we, we see that this attitude of uh, imparting or teaching Bhagavad Gita in the great intimacy of friendship touches people's hearts.
and is very significant in helping even a demon, as described here in, in the uh, 16th chapter, verse number 8, <laughs> it continues, Then when we are awake, we see that everything is simply a dream. But factually, although the demons say that life is a dream, they are very expert in enjoying this dream. And so, instead of acquiring knowledge, they become more and more implicated in their dreamland. Just like the thief was imagining getting out of prison and going to meet Prabhupada to steal his watch. That's a dreamland. That's, that's crazy. They conclude that as a child is simply the result of sexual intercourse between man and woman, this world is born without any soul. For them, it is only a combination of matter that has produced the living entities, and there's no question of the existence of the soul. These are all conclusions of the, of the demons, and most people are demons. As many living creatures come out from the perspiration and from a dead body without any cause, the whole living world has come out of the material combinations of the cosmic manifestation. Therefore, material nature is the cause of this manifestation. There is no other cause. They do not believe in the words of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, Maya Daksena Prakriti Suryate Satcharacharam. Under my direction, the whole material world is moving. In other words, among the demons, there's no perfect knowledge of the creation of the world. Every one of them has some particular theory of his own. According to them, one interpretation of the scriptures is as good as another, for they do not believe in a standard understanding of the scriptural injunctions. Now imagine how you can convince a person like this to become a devotee. It's not an easy thing. But what cuts across the lines of demarcation, the lines of, uh, you know, the uh, uh, impenetrable line of uh, where one is convinced of the demoniac point of view. The only way you can penetrate that is through the intimacy of friendship. And we should think about that. Preaching is a very, very, uh, let's say, deep meditation for a devotee to find ways and means to convince someone to take up Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Are there any questions?